I've been looking for you. Got something I'm supposed to deliver. Your hands only. Let's see here. Yeah, got this note. Don't know. Creepy fella. Black robe. Couldn't see his face. Paid me a pretty sum to get that into your hands, though. Looks like that's it. Got to go. like a fucking you, you, you see it in yourself thing. No, it looks like shit. Mm -hmm. It looks like shit. What did you say? <laughs> I don't hear you. <laughs> I can't understand what you're saying. <laughs> What's up guys? Welcome back to Large Lads episode 26 with your host Max Sheeler and temporary guest star Sam Sheeler. Um, Sam's not talking this time. It's <laughs> gonna be a "Oops, All Max" episode. <laughs> I was rightfully called out in the last one for what I always do and uh, cutting you off. No offense taken. Every single time I go to edit these, I watch it and I'm like, "Holy shit, I look like a dickhead." This is rough. <laughs> You're just like, "Well, yeah." The other day, I was like, "So anyway." <laughs> it's extra funny because I cut Sam off more in person by like a huge margin. Um, the second the camera's on, you know, something oh, takes a hold of you. Clean up the act. <laughs> no, it's like, honestly, the comment didn't bother me because I was like, yeah, you're right. I think the exact same thing. Like I've, uh, someone said, at least I've gotten better since the early episodes. Apparently those were brutal. <laughs> um, I think part of it also, I was like camera shy. And so to yeah. avoid massive dead space. And you just kept talking. Yeah, you and Kirsten, originally, the first times you guys were featured, were just, like, so clammy. It's so funny and weird thing about, like, just how weird it is to be on camera still. Yeah. Like, sometimes it's like, ugh, all right. <laughs> I just don't think it's real people, so it doesn't bother me any. You guys are real people to me. Make sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> Let us know your thoughts on all of the questions. You know, uh, we got very low engagement last time. We've been really curious what your guys' favorite color is. Drop it down below. Please engage. What's please. the most drop <laughs> mode color? What's the most dork mode? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, was, I don't know. I read the comment. I was like, yeah, that's bang on. But then I got in my head a little bit over it because okay. I was like, I hope people don't think it's because I don't think you're smart. Because mm. I think you are the most underrated person I know in terms of, like, the, <laughs> the gap between how smart people in real life and on the internet think you are, mm. and how smart I think you are, biggest gap of anyone I've ever met. I think you're one of the smarter people I know, and people in real life think, I you're, was say, people I, in real life think you're retarded. It's really a weird thing to be like, hmm, everyone on the internet, and my whole family, and everyone <laughs> yeah. that knows me, it's a All really of our relatives, yeah. At what point am I wrong? <laughs> <laughs> at what point am I just dumb? I'm <laughs> asking you, though. I think, I think you're very smart. <laughs> it's very funny, our whole family also thinks I am really not smart. Really <laughs> our mom thinks Max can't tie his shoes. Yeah, so mm -hmm. should we call him, uh, say I'm being like, hey. Thank you for taking care of your brother. As and Max <laughs> choked on a bed gap. <laughs> like, Max would be dead without you. I'm like, I don't think he'd be dead. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, but I was like, I hope people don't like perceive it that way it's just me tarting out because I'm like I gotta fucking keep it on track and make it a good video yeah. and in my head good video is just like information density okay. and it's just like that's not the point but it's like me spazzing mm. not that I don't think what you're saying matters I think I need to start asking less good questions because that way you'll like have to struggle to actually give good information. Because <laughs> I think most of the time we'll manage to somehow give decent lifting talking points. Mm. But if we ask dumber and dumber questions, smart. Um, I, th I think it will result in better videos. Listen, I got opinion. Me, me and Caspian have opinions on everything when we really shouldn't. All right, jock mode and dork mode picks for cardio. We all got to be doing mm. it somehow. I'm gonna open with a little bit of a heater. Let's Not really. This is a very stupid take that I feel so strongly about. Mm. The elliptical is cool. <laughs> Everyone needs to stop saying the elliptical is lame. I really like it, okay? It feels like the perfect warm-up. <laughs> you know, I look very stupid doing my little... It's good, okay? I need to, I, this is going to be my IPF trend that I start. It's is a that, whole, it is a whole body warm-up. 
It also, the issue with like an assault bike, it feels like my, like my hips aren't fully warmed up. And yeah. elliptical, if you have an elliptical at your gym, warm up with it. Do like 10 minutes on the elliptical. Don't even go hard. I swear to God, you'll be, you'll be commenting, Max, that was awesome. Best warm up of my life. <laughs> uh, ben, uh, ben Polak also is big on the uh, elliptical. Oh, that really hurts me a lot. Yeah. That does, that does stay um, a little bit. You know, wind bike, because it's hard and works your whole body. I like things where you like warm up, like get blood flow kind of everywhere, but I understand what you mean. You're never going to like hip extension. Yeah, the like bike feels very knee, kind of quad heavy. Yeah. Whereas like the elliptical is a little bit more hip heavy. Yeah. And I'm already doing a million air squats to warm up, so like something about warming up like my actual like hips feels very good. Um, wind bike's been uh, me and Sam just bought a wind bike, and I feel like it's been very good for improving my actual cardio. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I feel like the like the stuff that is pretty commonly used by people that actually are getting into really good shape, mm. I think of as cool. Yep. So wind bike. Uh, rower seater, right? I've Things never used this intervals. Gear. It's fine. It's cool. So it's, it's cool to have a upper body cardio mm -hmm. that isn't this thing yeah. that's like hard, and you can do intervals on it. You can do steady state on it. You can go like short distances, long distances. You can do it on like a recovery day circuit where mm -hmm. it's like ten calories, some mobility, ten calories, some foam rolling, ten calories, some foam rolling, back and forth for like you know twenty minutes. Um, really good, like active recovery day. <laughs> It's really, uh, I'm sleepy. I'm actually super smart, if you guys didn't know. I think you were saying eat 10 calories <laughs> to each, like, movement. Is that what you were saying? You do 10 calories and then you stretch. I thought you were saying, like, you you do the exercise for a little bit. You eat 10 calories with the food. <laughs> <laughs> actually, that's way cooler. <laughs> like, this is the, this you, is you the... eat one Dorito chip to make sure you're not losing any glycogen. You do the foam a little bit. Right. You eat one Dorito. I'm going to try it. Like, I was like, that's Thursday. God, it's a really fascinating day on rest day. That's really, that's really interesting. <laughs> How do you know when you're going to take calories? <laughs> <laughs> um... You have to measure out your servings beforehand. Yeah. <laughs> I think those aren't good because you can get, re like, there's no upper limit. Like, you can over, like, overload of, like, chase, like, calories burned in 20 minutes. Mm. You can literally just plot that in a spreadsheet. Yeah. I'm, I'm keen to buy into things I can, like, logbook and get better at. Yeah. So it's like, it could be an hour on, like, an incline treadmill. I used a calorie estimator, and I just, once I got in the habit of writing down how many calories I burned in that hour mm. and gradually trying to improve that, my buy into cardio went through the roof. Mm. I don't like how trendy it is, but rucking is cool conceptually. Okay. I can't, like, I want to be, like, pseudo counterculture because our gym has a bunch of, like, tactical bros that okay. are just constantly walking up to me and asking about rucking. And it's like, dude, just, you're not in good shape. Just a regular incline treadmill will get the job done. You know, but everybody wants to have their best. Like, I feel like rucking is good for just tricking people to go on like a weekly walk. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's where it's like, like, how much is holding 25 pounds like going to make this go editing from a casual Sunday stroll to a devastating hardcore military? Like, it's like wearing a school backpack sometimes. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think it's good. I think there's benefits to it. Like, Josh Bryant's a big advocate for it. Oh, I've fallen. I also am just saying, I need to start rucking. Yeah, I, that's it's cool. That I'm getting it's tricked cool. by the uh, <laughs> internet perception. Is I'm like, this is actually it's like yeah, it's, it's walking like, but manly. It's not like it's <laughs> just the whole everybody like, what if I just wear ankle weights everywhere and then I say, come on, <laughs> broccoli. But it's like, yeah, but then it's like, it's just walk. <laughs> it's walking. It's walking. But I every time I fall, I'm like, it's walking, but it's heavy. <laughs> yeah. Just you actively make it. Yeah, you I, don't know. I like too. the hard stuff where it's like hypothetically I could continue getting in better and better shape. You can use it for steady state, you can use it for intervals. Uh, so yeah, I guess like my fourth jock modus, yeah. which they're definitely just not the jock modus, like just like the the hammer uh, tire hit. Okay. Far cooler. Mm. But I'm gonna I, argue because uh, setting it up in a gym is a little bit embarrassing. Nah, I mean our our gym we, it would be outside. That's fair. You know, out in the sun. Yeah. Simulating being a working class, <laughs> or we are very working class, uh, be having a manual labor job. I don't think we make enough money to not be working class. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Wind bike, uh, rower, skier, uh, and then just like I love incline treadmill for my zone two work. Uh, the incline can go up and up and up to make sure your heart rate gets in range. And a hypothetically, you get in real good shape. You add weight to keep your heart rate in range for like good zone two stuff. So not very job. So mine is the elliptical is number one. Mm. A casual Sunday stroll, go on a walk, you know? Yeah. I'm doing like a 25 minute walk, pretty cool. <laughs> Max has been doing the walks. <laughs> um, 
What amount of people should be doing uh, pull hook grip versus mix grip if we're talking like a power lifting oh. context? Because I feel like there's kind of a perception that it's like hook grip is the master grip. Um, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm not getting the ball the I've already talked too. I've already talked too much. They're gonna bully uh, me. You know, there's this perception that's like hook grip is the master grip. Everyone should be pulling it. Mm -hmm. And then I think some amount of people are just like, no, I'm not gonna do pull hook grip. That's what dorks do. Mm -hmm. um, so I, if I was to ask you realistically, what percentage of people do you think should be actually doing hook grip versus? Bitch, I asked for your answer. I'm probably fucking not getting in trouble. <laughs> You're not gonna get in trouble. I literally, my brain just goes blank, and I start like. Apparently, somebody in the comments highlighted that information dumping on like niche topics is just a symptom of being autistic. And I was like, oh no. A really a brutal one for you is your hatred of loud noises. Oh uh, yeah, just like I, I've mentioned, I regularly mention my hatred for loud noises and info dumping habits. Mm, yeah, you definitely don't have a special mm. interest. <laughs> You can go first, though. I'm sure you have some thoughts on this as a mixed grip man in the modern era when everybody's like, why don't you hook grip? Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Um, I did hook grip once. Uh, yeah. uh, me and Sam put like a solid two training blocks in when I was like much, much, much younger. Might be a little bit more than that. Uh, yeah, it probably was, I guess. Um, it's very funny. My first 500-pound deadlift, we were training hook grip, then realized I was not going to be able to pick it up, hook grip. So we just put on straps, and I did kind of an ugly first 500-pound deadlift. Um, I, th I think it's the only deadlift yard I've ever pulled in straps as well. Yeah. Because um, I think generally we try to avoid that. I think pulling an all-time PR in straps is, on those very specific conditions, probably a bad idea. Yep. Um, I think something that a lot of people don't take into consideration is so if they see, like, this is my favorite Instagram powerlifter or deadlifter or whatever. Mm. There's a huge difference between, like, what is the hand size necessary to hook grip a deadlift bar and a stiff bar. Because you see that, like, the deadlift bar, the whole meta, almost every one of the best uh, uh, sumo deadlifters is all pulling hook grip. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably the right choice. I think if you were, like, min-maxing the biggest sumo deadlifts on a deadlift bar, almost everyone is going to pull uh, hook grip. Who's got, is, who's, uh, you got it off the top of your head, anybody, like, of the top deadlift bar sumo guys? Yeah. Anyone from tugging? Death Grip Derek's hook, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, who, like, who even is it? There's someone that I can't think of right now. Well, I'm sure one of those like Russian dudes that we don't remember the name of that's cracked into the nines. There was a, a Nasanov, I remember, was pulling a mixed, mixed hook grip. Mixed hook, just where desperately he was, trying to hold on to that bar. <laughs> Which I guess if you're 181 pulling 880, it probably is pretty hard to hold on to even on there. Yeah, if you're, dude, that guy had not big hands. <laughs> They're a weird, turbo-thin, razor Russian bar. So funny that we, like that was a huge critique of Russian powerlifting forever, and then we just oh. made the kabuki. Dude, where it's like, like, oh, Russians are using their own special, way easier bar. It, well, no, it wasn't a different bar. It was that they had a like a uh, thicker, non-standard kilo as the innermost plate was the main. Oh, those like gray ones. Uh, yeah, like they were like gray or green, um, and the WRPF meets was using basically it looked like a hundred pound plate, like the d thickness of a hundred pound plate, which is obviously less in yeah. than a four, like than a twenty five kilo. And the whole thing was like, yeah, Yuri Belkin might broke the world record, but it was on this non-standard setup. No. We shouldn't count it. Oh, uh, how the mighty have fallen. USA, what the, we invented what the our own fuck? way cheatier bar. So it's like, yeah, if you're pulling on a kabuki, I think almost everyone should, should be hooking uh, for the most part. Because like the hand size requirement. You mean sumo, right? Yes, yeah, sumo. Mm -hmm. um, conventional, I'll be honest. I don't know how much of this was. I was just less experienced at the time. Uh, it, hook grip just like janked my lockout. And maybe I was doing a terrible job hook gripping. Maybe I was not... Like my, it's only about my mechanic change, and if I had stuck with it, I would have learned a better pull. But it was like, I think both of us were just like, hey, I don't think we're at a high risk of tearing my bicep. I think if I do tear my bicep, we'll maybe do another foray into hook grip. But at the moment, it's like, I don't, I've never like felt any like discomfort yep. from it. I'm not like super worried about muscular imbalances. I know that's like a big one for a lot of dudes. It's very funny that there's now just like a very easy solution. If you're one of the dudes who's like very paranoid about muscular imbalances, just like learn hook. Yeah, it's fine. It's like you know, it's probably for most part for most people going to be like roughly equivalent, but you're adding inconsistency. Dude, in. wait till those guys find out their heart is only on one side of their body. <laughs> it's, it's over for them. It's so funny. I remember being like a young powerlifter and being like, ah. Oh. I know I'm gonna look like Quasimodo, but it's a necessity. <laughs> like, like I, was, I was so convinced that what makes me was gonna like to leave you like deform, you, leave you deformed. Well, I was like, I'm gonna be powerlifting for thirty years. Um, this is me thinking at twelve, and I was like, I know I'm gonna end up just like one of my arms is gonna become shorter. Like the bones are gonna oh, shrink. Um, um, 
So stiff bar. Yeah, um, I honestly think that you need to have some pretty big hands to do a very good, consistent stiff bar uh, hook grip. And if you have that, it's probably a good thing for sumo period. And then even conventional, I still think it's like worth playing around with because there is a lot of like inconsistency in terms of like competition performance. Like hook grip guys on average are like messing up their grip way high, like more often. And obviously it's a skill that you can get better at, but I think it's like kind of like the percent that you're gaining from it being like a probably slightly more like optimal lockout position is like, is that worth it for you to uh, be losing that consistency chance? I almost fully lost that train of thought. I was going to uh, say, brother, you're, we're, we're not beating the Max's dumb allegations. All right, guys. I'm actually really just froze happened. in the middle of that. I just like had to reboot. I, like, I, no. <laughs> I, just, I just went to bat for you, brother. It's very funny. I feel like me just stopping in the middle of the sentence is like the biggest uh, sign that I'm tired. Yeah. Like sometimes I'll just lose it. I'm like, you just say, no, I gave up. I gave up. I'm not going to remember it. <laughs> that one's over. <laughs> you yeah. got the point. I don't well, know. Well, I think you got a really good point, right? Where it's like when we talk about like competitive techniques, you could do something that's a little bit more reliable, or you see some guys that just are going with like the real gamble on all three lifts, where it's like if you hit that, I don't know, 25% chance, you lift well above kind of what you should have. And every meet is a little bit of a dice roll, and it's like one of these times the three are gonna line up. On, like the, the power of a meet is like a slot machine. If you're like toes are already tr like way turned out in the sumo, and you have balance issues, if you nail it, and you're like they got that max width toes turned out position, kind of that like shoulders are still forward, but you look up to pretend you're locked out, right? Like. Uh, some guy squats are a little bit less that way where it's like I don't know many people who are like true like dice roll squatters who are good um, Benches like really really precise mega arch guys it Definitely it's almost like how equipped lifting was where yeah. it was just like you show up and you either bomb or you break a world record And there's no in between yeah well, like uh, Blake Hugh. It's so know? funny. That was gonna be my example. Yeah, Blake no LeHue. disrespect to him But like it's like that guy is just every meet is just rolling the dice He's either gonna crush a world record or go like three for nine and it's like his techniques are kind of like optimized to lift as much weight as he can when it hits but the margin for error is really small, which leads to consistency issues. And then you have guys who probably could get a little bit more weight on the bar if they were a little bit more like optimized, but um, they are very consistent mm -hmm. because the lift is so simple the way they do it. It's like they can either lift it or they can't, and there really isn't many like gamble numbers. Yeah, I feel like it's something that like really, really factors into that is weight cutting. Where like the likelihood mm -hmm. that your performance goes bad is suddenly 50-50. Yeah. So even you take that into it and then each of your lifts is another 25%. And I think part of it is like beginners just need to not be taking these dice rolls. Like just use the most consistent technique because most people who are like early into any sport are like two bad meets away from quitting the sport. Or maybe one. Yeah. Like a lot of people who like we go to the gym with um, that are like earlier into power. Dude, I hope that kid that did the last local meet, there was some kid that showed up just like wearing like a fucking like Bob Ward's like fishing game <laughs> shirt and hat. Uh, just like li li shorter guy, pretty jacked. Oh my God, that guy was good and had so much potential. Like squatted, like he was like a 165er. Uh, tested me, squatted like mid to upper fives, benched almost 400, pulled like, pulled 660 but call called up on up and down motion and then bombed. I'm like, God, I hope that kid doesn't get discouraged because, oh my God, you're so close to being already being like <laughs> highly nationally competitive. And he's like 19. Like I was coaching uh, Cole and like maybe one other person. And like Cole is good enough that like our goal is to win local meets. Yeah. You know, like I want to say Cole's like a 435, 440 dots kind of guy. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, assuming no one at the local level of Montana, yeah. that's like contending. That's a podium guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, so it's like, well, let's see where we shake out. And I was like telling him like, well, yeah, our big goal for you, um, we're not going to be in a position to PR some of our lifts because he had an injury a little bit ago, but our goal would be to win. I think that'd be a good result. 
And I go look at the opener thing, and I was like, dude, you're fucked. You're so far from winning, and then they get bombed, and, and goal one. Let's go. <laughs> the best result is always to have yeah. better than you. Uh, dude, I, um, I hope that kid doesn't get discouraged. You know, it's a shame when someone just doesn't understand, like, how far ahead they are. Yeah. Because they, they identify that they're working, like, harder than average, mm. but they don't understand that they're also gifted. Yeah. Well, it's also very funny. I feel like I've co-opted, like, the idea of, like, Montana farm boy strength. Is that people just, like, hear that I live in Montana and lift weights? When really you're a Seattle soy jack. Yeah, I'm working in a... That like, Seattle soy jack strength <laughs> fucking working in a packaging department. Yeah, I'm in an air-conditioned room labeling boxes. Like, I the lamest job. While watching time. Netflix all day. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty cool. Yeah, cultivate... I think that's the greatest thing that ever happened to your Instagram mm -hmm. was like accidentally cultivating the... This is just some kid who just works on a farm and has a mullet. Yeah, that's it's like, nope, this is a specialized power lifter for a decade. <laughs> <laughs> this guy stumbled into this 800 pound deadlift and it's like, damn, I've been doing this for uh, my whole life. Uh, um, but I feel like that's that dude is the real, just like some guy came off uh, fishing on a crick and then came over here and it, squatted 595. Yeah, it's like, God, God, Lee, that kid has, he's got it, man. I yeah. hope he sticks with it. But uh, you, the thing, if uh, history is showing anything, the more talented you are, the more likely you are to rapidly quit when it gets hard. One of these times, one of the people that we've met, probably, I don't know, seven or eight people. Who that was like just wicked. I'm like, God damn it. Well, like, you are just like, a, you're doing a different sport than me. This is so easy for you. Um, um, and all of them have quit so far. <laughs> but one of them, one of these days, is going to stick with it. One of these days, baby. Uh, let's see. Other than that, yeah, like some percentage of people are going to be... Let's just go stiff bar, thicker diameter, harder to hold on to, uh, lesser percentage are going to be better off hook. Um, people make pretty shitty straw man arguments and they're like, uh, yeah, but this 59 kilo woman can hook grip so you can. All right, that's sick, dude. I can also hook grip 400 pounds. Like, it, it scales. Yeah. And then, like, a lot of the people that are really, really aggressively, like, uh, people who pull mixed are idiots, also have grip issues. Like, they regularly, every other meat, drop their poles. Also, let me say, there are 59 kg women that I swear to God have longer thumbs than Sam. Yeah. Uh, Sam has the shortest thumbs I've ever seen on an adult man. <laughs> it's because they're bent. <laughs> Our dad also has this weird crooked thumb. Um, yeah, th like this. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, no, I, don't, I don't know. It scales, right? It's, like, it's, yeah. it's, I, it's almost like a fear of them being wrong. And I need to have like a, there is a right answer yeah. to be confident. So they're like, oh, anybody pulls, makes his knee, and hook grip is the infinite grip, hook grip, and blah, blah, blah. But like, how many bicep tears do you see? Like, watch the whole USAPL Nationals live stream. How many bicep pops do you see? The answer is one in like the masters and maybe one in the entire, like, no one's popping biceps left and right that isn't just hammering a bunch of drugs and doing a wicked water cut on a 24 hour weigh in. Yeah. Like, the risk for natty guys is way lower. Stop scaring people because of internet videos. Uh, and it's not the infinite grip because the, most of the people that say that drop shit all the fucking time. Yeah. I also, it's very funny. That's not, and that's not anti, I'm not anti hook grip at all. Like, our, my best deadlifter pulls hook grip. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it works quite well. But this idea that it's a one-size-fits-all answer, watch the high performers on a stiff bar at IPF Worlds or at USAPL Nationals, and you will see a mixed bag. And these aren't idiots. These are people who have been powerlifting for quite a long time. They, I promise you, every single one of them tried hook grip, tried mixed grip, and found which one produced them the better result. Yeah. And you can see that in these high performers who are very interested have very smart coaches, if you, if you think all high performers are morons, that's fine. Their coaches are usually smart. They, they're doing the thing, like the, uh, the low-hanging fruit to optimize the result, and you're going to see a mixed bag. So maybe we should come in with an open mind and see what works for us without needing to glom onto a, my camp is right. Ugh. Yeah, it's also a, very, like, a real culture thing. Because like, we've met some people that it's like, you're going to tear your bicep again. Like you're someone who's already done it. You're like, <laughs> a 242 untested male who's like true, the essence of monkey gripping it. Like, true. <laughs> um, and it's like, just learn hook, but it's like, essentially, like, I'm not going to do that weird grip. And it's like, if you identify as a technical lifter, then you're going to like try and force a hook grip. Mm -hmm. And if you identify as this like, I'm a real man, strong power lifter. Well, you know, there's a good example of like, if you try to be a little bit more objective, mm -hmm. um, Bryce Lewis, I hope he didn't switch and make me wrong, but he, for the longest time, was like, sumo mixed grip. Yep. Which you will see more sumo mixed grips on the stiff bar, mm -hmm. um, because it is a pretty different mechanic. Yep. And... He was like, oh man, like when I pull in straps, double overhand, it beats up my back so much less. 
but he still chose to pull mixed grip in competition. Yeah. You know? It's like, if there's anybody who isn't tied to like macho man lifting, it's Bryce Lewis. Bryce right. Lewis constantly posting about his feelings. It's like, he doesn't have like this weird, like manly man mixed grip image to maintain. And he also is very good at powerlifting yeah. and puts a lot of thought into how to maximize his result. And he still came to the conclusion that for him it's better. So I hate, I, I don't know, I hate that whole sh fucking shindig. All right, <laughs> what's the coolest old people hobby? Once you're done with powerlifting, what do you think you're gonna pick up? Fishing. Fishing? Fishing. <laughs> That's a change in answer. The Montana's finally getting to you. Fishing. Fishing and uh, I feel like that's really fun. Jiu Jitsu land. Okay, okay, go get Dude, dork mode. Full <laughs> contact. Con if you're a 50 year old doing just like hard sparring, you're the man. It's always the it's always dudes who are running a rough life. It's very funny. At, at the at the old gym I went to, use, the the old guys that would like regularly just be sparring like had CTE, just like hated their lives, would like hated their jobs. And just went to hard spar. Well, think about this. Fucking sick. You, you, you have a hard spar, except for with me. Uh, <laughs> and, and 10 plus years. Or 10 years. Yes, um, that. You know, by the end of your power career, by the time you're retired and 50 or something. My CTE will have healed. It's gonna be, you're going to be 30-something. And so it's like all these guys, guys that you're seeing at the boxing gym, they've been hard sparring probably twice a week for their, their life. whole lives. So you're starting your CTE. Well, my guys go more than twice a week, which is crazy. God, hard sparring. Some guys go like five days a week hard spars. That is, that's wild. Um, so uh, hard sparring and fishing is pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. It's pretty <laughs> soft. Yeah. Just being an old man, just going in. Getting concussed and fishing. I don't need to be smart to fish. You're just beating up a bunch of young kids. That's my plan. There, just, there were definitely some kids when uh, I was boxing or some older dudes that were like 40-something that like really, really took pride in your ass. beating me up when I was 13. <laughs> in like any other context, they're evil, but um, I did deserve it. Um, I'm, not, I'm not much of a hiking guy. Fair. Fishing seems cool. Not much of a hunting guy. Uh, I just keep playing Skyrim. Uh, okay, okay, Skyrim. Yeah. Hey. Maybe maybe the next Elder Scrolls game will be out by the time. Yeah, by the time I retire from powerlifting, maybe the next Elder Scrolls will be out, yeah. and then that'll just be my retirement plan. Yep. Um, yeah, I don't know. Fish, video games, combat sports. Obviously, still lift like four days a week. Sounds like a good life to me. Someone, uh, someone uh, I was DMing someone. They mentioned uh, swimming. I feel like swimming is like really a go old people health exercise. Yeah, like, keeps, like keep my shoulders mobility mm. even okay. Pretty good. Swimming is really good for your shoulders. And then tennis, because I like tennis. Or ping pong. Um, honestly, I like to be a ping pong old person. Just go halfway in between. Pickleball is super already popular with old people. Mm, that's true. They really like a pickleball. They I, love, dude, they love pickleball. I, I can tell if I got into pickleball, I'd be a real competitive old man. Just like really, I would get uninvited from the pickleball games. I mean, that's how our grandma just broke her hip. <laughs> Going hard in the pickleball court. And our man refused to lose. Dude, amen. Um, Dude, if I'm, if I'm going hard playing pickleball at 90, I've won. Yeah. Uh, as a fan of the sport, what lift would be the coolest for you to see? We were, uh, Sam and I will always talk about... Sport like, being probably powerlifting, right? Um, the sport. You can, you can throw in your, your MMA one. <laughs> the MMA um, one. I was going to say strongman, the one I competed. Yeah, yeah, MMA strongman. We've been talking about, like, we're, like, we always say, like, oh, if this person gets it done, it's, like, the coolest thing in the world. Sam. You have permission to speak. <laughs> Stipe knocks out John Jones in the first 30 seconds of the <laughs> Just full. I always think it'd be Everybody's written him off, but the firefighter's back, baby. I think it'd be even funnier if it was a five round domination and in the fifth round he knocks him out. Like, so, like, dog no. walks him the whole f five rounds. No, I want, I want, like, a gone Jones. Like, we didn't even get to see the fight. Oh, that, okay. Really? Stipe just goes across the ring and sleeps him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but powerlifting and strongman, the ones we actually do. Yeah, yeah. You got, you got any? Um, if Ray gets the 500, I might cry. Yep. I think that would be, the, that's a big one. I, that would be the most up and down story. That would be a sick one. Is it just like take a, a four year hiatus, have everyone write you off and say you're not the best in your weight class somehow? Um, you mean like the GOAT? Yeah. I have a, I've got a similar one that isn't given quite as much credit for varied reasons. Okay. Vlad Elhazov. Going from multiply squat all time world record, double knee replacement, very much being written off, like 10 years later, doing the heaviest wrapped squat ever. 
Yeah. That's that the, kind of flew under the radar because Raps was kind of going by the wayside. It didn't completely fly under the radar, but a lot of people weren't familiar with his history as a top equipped lifter. I think he went to Westside for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, double knee replacement, two heaviest squat ever. God, I remember being a fan of like, who is this guy? Because I, I remember that was when Raps were still like, I think the more... On the untested side. Yeah, on the untested side, it's still the by far biggest thing. And it was like Mark Bell put on a story like, I used to know this guy. Um, that was like the weirdest thing because he was like a private on Instagram with 800 followers. That probably should get more credit than it gets. Or like, you know, or like you got the Doug Young like broken rib meat. Yeah. You know, just literally cracks his rib on his squat and then finishes the meat with a pretty good total. Yep. That's kind of like the, that's like the quintessential like... Image of Doug Young plus that story is like the quintessential old, like, he works at the railroad tracks and then uh, yeah. <laughs> chugs some beer. And I don't barley. do circus tricks. <laughs> I don't do circus tricks. Nothing's I'm ever not. given me more confidence in not doing strongman than the Doug I'm Young. I'm not a clown. I don't do circus <laughs> tricks. <laughs> I don't do circus tricks. <laughs> um, okay, so that would be like the squat that would mean the most. That's, yeah, it's kind of based on what's set up right now. Cool. And Maddox, 800 bench. Yeah, yeah, that it will be. It's possible a tragedy. It's more that one. That, that's probably the more likely of the two. Yeah, well, it's what I've talked about. It's such a bummer. The idea that if Maddox doesn't get it, I think there's going to be some small like, like, like community perception that he failed instead of the fact that he's single handedly the strongest progressed by the a country mile and seventy uh, pounds like by himself progressed this record. Shot called what would be. I I don't. It's not my favorite lift, but what I think is objectively probably the most impressive lift. What's well, the most contested lift in powerlifting? Because there's a bunch of people. People generally do full power or bench only. And he's so, ahead by the farthest margin. Yeah, so and so like, he is ahead of the most contested lift. Yeah. So you've got an interesting argument that that is the best single lift. I think we're going by numbers. It's the most impressive lift ever. Like uh, if he got the 800 or yeah. just his bench PR already. I mean, his bench PR already. But yeah. like, the 800 is kind of like the the you get the really round number as well as everything else. It's just so weird to see him have like kind of low hanging fruit technically to be picked up still. Um, God, that guy is so strong. He's so strong. Uh, yeah, I would love to see that. Like it's the same thing with like Lasha, but I see that public perception a little bit less. Yeah. But because the idea of a 500 kilo total was floated out there, you have people that are really casually into the sport that are like, ah, oh, it's real. Sh like the career summation is it's a shame he didn't get it. And it's like, do you not realize this is just the strongest ever with the most like sh fucking consistent world championship, world championship, world champion, like as Speaking a super? It's the same thing with Maddox, where it's like you have people that are cat, like they don't know that he took Kirill's record and pushed it fucking like 50 pounds. Speaking of, uh, hey, Lasha says he's not retiring yet. <laughs> Speaking of a lift that I don't follow weightlifting that closely, if Lasha got the 500 kilo done, he should just go do the do, do what he did last time, like pop, go dope for a couple of years, and come back at 40 and crush 500 kilos. <laughs> so he'll suddenly have no more injuries because he's too much. Of that. Um, to take that McGregor rehab approach. <laughs> hey, he's not in the pool. He's not in the pool. <laughs> I would love to see someone do. I mean, jeez. Sir Dave, a thousand. On the stiffy? Yeah, greatest deadlift of all time. Oh, uh, did you see he took a shot at 980 on the stiffy? I did. <laughs> Sir Dave, it's, uh, holy fuck, that guy's been deadlift. Also, speaking of, I don't know if uh, people are that familiar, uh, Sir Dave on Instagram, uh, heaviest stiff bar deadlifts ever done by... At 960. 40 pounds, 50 pounds. Yeah. I um, mean, if we count, if we want to say ever done, like, in, not in competition, right? Jesus kind of had that, like... 940? Yeah. Is that what he had? I think it was, that was 926. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Jesus, if you see this, totally my bad. <laughs> <laughs> trying to underplay. I'm not trying, trying to undersell. Like, yeah, 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 one like, of yeah. the strongest deadlifts ever done by yeah, a squat's like 900 or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like, you know, 1,000. He's slowly closing on the 600 pound bench, I think. You know, he's yeah. already just stronger than all of us. <laughs> um, yeah, best deadlift ever done, probably. Um, like, people are like, Thor, Thor, Thor. This is better. Like, it's I so funny, I better. called Sam. I, I don't, when I told somebody to do a 960 stiff bar in comp, I was like, that's... Well, so what I was going to say is no one has actually pulled a thousand conventional on kilos. And I would really prefer that not happen on a Kabuki, again, because it feels like a moving target his, historically compared. Like, as much as I love Benny, yeah, I do have to discount the fact that that wasn't on the standard setup. Like, yeah. I would do... To anyone else, I would slate for that. Yeah. I, would, I would give him a real hard time. Um, but he did have the 970 on kilos. So yeah, so he still has the heaviest conventional on kilos. 
Right, yeah. so it's like, regardless, it's still him, which gives him a little bit more credence. Raw, but, shout out Bolton. Raw, yeah, yeah, because uh, Bolton did the 980 on kilos. Yeah. Yeah, because neither of his thousands were on kilos, I don't think. But whatever, it's like, I would like to see that happen. If that happened on a stiff bar, bare hand, that is just the most insane shit I've ever heard yeah, maybe of. the greatest feat of strength ever, period. It <laughs> might be. I, I would, a stiff bar, raw, a thousand with no straps is so much better than 500 kilos in a suit and straps. Yeah. It's insane. And the fact that it's happened by a 275-er. And he's going, he's progressing so fast. I know. He'll, he might do it. Which is just like, that, that would be the best, that is the best elevator. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, um, you look at all these guys who are like, oh, they're as good as Sir Dave, and get them on a stiff bar, suddenly they're a lot less relevant. Yeah, 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 Dan Grigsby, if you see this, I'm not apologizing. It's weird to go from the total record holder to being, if you put them on a stiff bar, not that competitive for the record at all. I don't know. I don't like that where it's like contingent on having specialty equipment for you to be highly competitive. Yeah. Zach Myers doesn't matter. I Sir do, Dave doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, I do. The ABS has been a very cool one because I don't know. I don't think untested powerlifting will ever fully switch to a stiff one because everyone likes the idea of big cool number. But if there is just like some stiff bar, high level meets that like it just becomes a thing to like shit on people if they can't do a good stiff bar result, that's good enough for me. Like if it just like is a real like legacy tarnisher to know that like this guy couldn't pull. That was like the anti mono uh, era, right? Yeah. Like, 2016, like 2019 where like more untested meets were starting to require people to walk it out and people would start bullying people for not being able to do a walkout. Good. That's good, yeah. Good. I, I think people don't know people for being like dodging stiff bar meets. I think it's maybe the best possible outcome for untested meets. I like housing. it, yeah. I, I think it's a great reactionary swing to the kabuki. It's like, fuck it, pull on a, pull on a stiff bar. Yeah, yeah, try it. <laughs> also, you, wow, it took way off some people's pulls. Yeah, yeah like, especially I, like top sumo guys, it's gonna nuke their pulls, like, which is what we've been saying for yeah. it has a bigger impact on like, that's no, right? That's not our novel. We didn't fucking crack the we fucking did. We're the ones who, we, we made that one up. Uh, we came up with that <laughs> using our physics. <laughs> My huge brain that everyone knows I have. Uh, most jock mode video games. <laughs> Skyrim. Let's go. So I've been playing Skyrim a lot, and it's been really... Yeah, I've been on a real... I got it on the Switch. Yes. <laughs> Okay, about 2011, it could run on a Switch. I was going to pitch to you that we do a Skyrim video, and it's just me and you discussing. Hey, the <laughs> intro. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I already made it ahead of time, so we know what it is. Uh, jock mode video games. It has to be RuneScape because the number of we, yeah, we, lifters <laughs> that are good at like, that are like RuneScape guys. Weird. There's a lot of like. It's partially just because it's like a. It's a very popular game. A lot of them are playing Warzone. There's like a bunch of top of the body builders that seem to be just like constantly playing Warzone. Well, it's because those dudes get good contracts. So their job actually is full-time bodybuilding. Yeah. And they're just like, what the fuck do I do between meals? Like you hear like James Hollingshead talk about it and he's like, yeah, I just got nothing to do for two hours until my next meal. Yep. Man, it's like play video games. It's like, video games or TV is kind of what you do. That's crazy. That's so sick. Why the fuck does sponsor us? <laughs> God, I just go to work to watch Ooh, TV. I hate working. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I can't even watch Netflix at home. I have to watch Netflix at my job. <laughs> the rat race. I actually have to earn money to pay for our mortgage. <laughs> um, I'm playing Minecraft lately. Um, Come on, if you want to see a, a world tour. <laughs> Large Lads Minecraft world tour. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then last question. Uh, oh my god, I should have put this so much earlier. It's actually a good one. Uh, oh, no. Competition snack recommendations. So like on the day of uh, comp, what are you eating? Mm, you can go first. Uh, so I've always, I don't know if we've, we might have answered this. We've done 20. We've, we've touched on your love for pretzels. Yeah, we've done 26 of these. So I, I'm definitely starting to ask some repetitive questions. But I think... A lot of people have watched the old ones anyway. It's the charm of the videos, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the lack of professionalism is the brand. <laughs> um, pretzels, huge. Love pretzels. I can't, the, honestly, the main reason is that I can't imagine throwing up pretzels. Um, like something about them. They're sturdy. You know, yeah, like they you know, I have to throw up a loaf, basically. Yeah. So I'm good. There's no chance. So on the dev, you know, a bunch of carbs, a bunch of sodium. That's fine. I don't like Gatorade. Um, I like just something about how like, Gatorade is my stomach. I always go body armors for potassium and the bananas. Have you tried the electrolytes? I don't have a bottle of it. Is it? Um, you've recommended them. I've not tried one yet. Yeah, they slap. They're good. Uh, I, got, I, I fucked up and didn't bring enough water to my last contest. They yeah. fun. Because uh, it was out in the sun in Billings. It was like 96. So yeah. It was hot. And I was like, oh, I'll make sure I'm ready. 
didn't bring water. Mm. So I got to the point where like the taste of sports drinks was horrifying to me. It's so funny. That's a really good point. Is that like I'm not water cutting, and I presume most of you guys are not water cutting. Or at so least you should. Yeah, you probably should not be massive water cutting. Um, I don't know how many turbo elite lifters are watching us, but like you, uh, hey, Justin, you're fine. The rest of you don't fucking water cut. Yeah, for the most part, most people should not be water cutting. So it's like it's not like I need to be like ultra rehydrated. It's not like I need you to know it's weird. Mm. There are you know it's like something. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> yeah, he almost did the whole video. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. <laughs> I was just gonna say, uh, it's not like you like reach this like ultimate way farther level of hydration level. Having way more electrolytes than a normal session isn't gonna make me more strong because I shouldn't. If it did, I would just have more electrolytes for every session mm -hmm. until I would just reach the point of productivity. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like drinking only body armor only just makes my stomach feel weird. Yeah. So it's like, I should have some body over to make sure I have enough potassium, so I'm probably sweating and like, mm -hmm. I'm not eating food for most of a competition day. Don't force yourself to eat too much food. Um, I always wake up really early on the uh, morning of a competition to eat, just cause it's like, I think having food four hours before a competition is way more important than trying to force yourself to eat a meal in the middle. Mm -hmm. That's something I've m made a mistake of, is that I'm like, I'll be so much stronger if I try and like, force feed teriyaki while I'm warming up for bench. Mm -hmm. Not a good idea. Just eat some amount of food. And as long as you had food that morning and a lot the night before, you're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. um, but like, I don't need to reach this like super level of hydration. So drink water. Don't just drink Gatorade. You're not going to be like ultra strong for having 5,000 milligrams Yeah, it's like people think like, oh, I'm going to carb max. And it's like, once your glycogen stores are filled, which presumably are because you deloaded all week, you haven't exactly been eating them up. Yeah. You know what I mean? You've, your activity levels are lower. Most people eat pretty normal. More carbs on top of that isn't going to do anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's the same thing with like the electrolytes. It's like once you're hydrated, you're hydrated. Like going past that doesn't make you even more hydrated. Yeah. And like same thing with the carbs. Like topping those out doesn't make you guys stronger. So it's like you just need to have enough to be like full and fueled. And like you said, you wake up early. I usually can't sleep much the night before a contest. So at like 2 or 3 in the morning, I'll eat meal 1. Or at least I'll take I'll eat as much of meal 1 before I start getting slightly pukey, which might not be very much, and I've actually come to terms with that being okay. Yeah. I just can't. Done with the meal, yeah. go back to bed, wake up in the morning for the contest, eat meal two. Again, just go whatever I got. Yeah. It, and it, not try to force. Because I think that's mental energy, like really just like force feeding. Also, that's throwing up that means that you don't have any food in your system. Your stomach feels weird. You know, it's like you, you get like a hormone response when you eat something that you're really sussed out by. It's going to make the same food digest worse. I don't know if you've noticed this, but it's like if you're like freaking out about a food while you eat it, it doesn't matter what it was, it's going to digest mm. that. I don't know if I want to like put this out there. The other day I was eating beef and rice. I was, like, I was having a hard eating day and everyone was like, what if this was maggots? And I was like, all right, that's in the fridge. Fuck. <laughs> what an awful thought to have. <laughs> um, <laughs> it really fucked myself on that one. But yeah, I, I, that's what I do because I can't sleep. I wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't interrupt my sleep if I was sleeping to eat. Right? Yeah. That's silly. But what, yeah, what I do is I, because I'm up anyway, eat meal one really early. That way I'm lifting after two meals, which is what I normally do. So yeah. I'm re replicating like how I train the best, which is having at least two meals eaten. It's a combination of water and sports drinks or maybe just like some salt tabs. Uh, I've really been fiddling with what I bring to the contest. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, kind of the, the, Pretzels have been hurting my stomach. I don't know like, if that's like, I've, it's just a lot of gluten to be the only thing in my stomach. I don't know what it is. I'm not like, I'm, not, I'm celiac, but like excessive gluten intake is not so nice to me. It's crazy that you're, you're so much dealing more offensive. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It didn't happen to you, but for me, 10 years of bulking straight is like, it's a pretty common issue to have from like overeating for like a really long time mm -hmm. is it's just like digestive strain. And yeah. I think if I were to, you know, eat what I want to, which is very little for like a week. My yeah. stomach would be a lot more resilient to like these things. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't know. Like I bring like bananas. I always bring bananas. Um, and then you and I usually will eat McDonald's halfway through, which looks so uh, not, like, it looks so amateur. Yeah. It's a really bad look because everybody else is like, oh my God, that guy's just fucking eating McDonald's. I remember really when last week I like, heard people like whispering Yeah, he's it. just a tarred fat kid who's <laughs> crushing McDonald's and lifting a lot of weight. And it's like, there is a rhyme or reason to it, right? Where it's like, we know that doesn't, is not too tough on the stomach and it's very easy to eat. Cause you and I many times have tried to follow the standard advice of bring your Tupperware. Yeah. 
especially if I don't have a microwave, man, I just like, it gets, like, I get fucking ill trying to put that down and it's a net negative. Like, sure, is that slightly less digestive strain? Yeah. Sure, but you're getting carbs and you're getting sodium. You know what I mean? I, yeah, but it looks so fucking amateur. Yeah. It's very funny. Which is so funny to say about powerlifting. <laughs> when I went to like a, like I've not been to a lot of actually high level meets, but I went to like a pro qualifier and it's like, I got no looks of judgment when I was eating fucking uh, McDonald's in the middle of it. Cause I think everyone else was eating their weird, whatever food they could get down. But every like, I think local, it's like, you want to like give off this essence of like, I'm actually the one taking it most seriously here. And so it's like, I can eat beef and rice to be hardcore. But it's like, I know that I'm not gonna be able to eat it cold. I usually don't want to hunt down a microwave in the middle of a competition. And I know that no matter where I'm competing, I can find a McDouble and then McDouble doesn't mess up my stomach. <laughs> yeah, what, and I, I remember, I, I fell for it. One of, I want to say it wasn't one of my early meets. It was one of your early meets, maybe. Okay. There was a high level lifter there who like, like had his Tupperware and like very visibly was like struggling his way through some beef and rice. Yeah. I was like, holy fuck. No wonder that guy's so good. That's so hardcore. Like he yeah. like stays on his diet on contest day. Yeah. I remember being like, whoa. And it's like, everybody wants to recreate that image. Yeah. But it's like, and if that, if that works for you and you just have a, like Thor says he's got no appetite. The Thor just, that guy's just hungry all the time okay. for beef and rice. And it's like, no, dude. he's like, yeah, I sleep great. Like, <laughs> On presumably boatloads of gear, he's like, yeah, no, I sleep easy eight hours every night. Like, usually I feel pretty good. I usually don't need to warm up. Uh, I'm always hungry. It's like, God, you really were just designed to do this, huh? This is really easy for you to follow. Yeah, God <laughs> damn it. And he's just like, yeah, I just bring my Tupperware. I, I, by the time I'm done with the first event, I'm starving for beef and rice. It's like, you <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> All right, guys, that was Large Lads episode 26. If you're oh, actually, wait, real quick. What was oh, say? <laughs> it's funny. Every time we're like talking, I was like, yeah, the average, even the average watcher of our fucking lifting podcast is an above average lifter. Yeah. But still, the average is still going to be pretty low. Like, you give, like, blanket advice. Like, ah, yeah, yeah, don't be water cut, yeah. right? There are, like, five or six really weirdly strong people that like this. And I always remember it's like... Huge shout out to you guys. Yeah, uh, just like, oh, yeah, you guys probably are like, yeah, no, Jasper is deadlifting, like, 800 for reps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Justin's also deadlifting 800 for reps. Uh, fucking third strongest man on earth sometimes watches this. Maybe you should be doing these things. <laughs> None of these people should be weight cutting. That's my official. Uh, yeah, no. uh, Justin. Justin should be. Does he need to cut to make? No, he's he's below. He's like bulking into the two. So he doesn't. It does not need to be. True, weight. but eventually he will. He needs yeah. he because his bench is his worst lift. He needs to, to, to gain and size. Down to two forty two. Exactly. He needs to be like a full size two. Put all of it onto his pecs. Well, yeah. He, like he wants a squat world record. It's like you're gonna do that with like a small water cut. Like yeah. to just be the same size as people. Like he's going for eight hundred at two forty two. You know, like, you got to bulk up a little bit. You can't be a 230-pound fucking 242. All right, guys, that was Large Lads. If you reach this point, uh, leave, a, leave an algo, leave a comment. What's your favorite color? Let us know, let us know what the most jock mode color is. Um, signing off to you guys. Hey, video games you like, please engage. I think this is kind of technically counts as three videos in a row, maybe. Uh, uh, is it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> did, did we, uh, this counts as last week? Yeah, this counts as, as though I did it on Saturday. Hmm.